Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice For All. Oh god, in the last episode Gumshoe found some evidence, was going to bring it to us, then got himself into a car accident. The worst possible time considering we need the evidence now. Well, so right now we're just going to have to stall as hard as we can, like stall like we've never stalled before. God help us. Court will now reconvene. I assume that both sides are ready. I yes, Your Honor. I yes, Your Honor. I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem so distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? I... well, that is... <clears throat> It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? Looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impax's suicide note. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that this suicide note is a forgery. What? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This... This note was not written by Miss Impacts herself. It is a fake. Oh, order! Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on here? If this is not written by Miss Impacts, then who in the world wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis. However, it appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corrida. Mr. Corrida? Well, well. It looks like Miss Impax never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about Ungard. However, Your Honor, even though this suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ungard could not have known that, and so the fact remains unchanged. Acting under the assumption it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm. Well, that does sound very plausible. Theory that Ungard had no idea the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Well, we'll go with your same argument that he saw the note through the camera. Wouldn't it be quite possible then that he saw Matt uh, uh, that he saw Corita simply writing it up, ma making it into a fake? The defense believes the theory the prosecution has stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it's impossible for Mr. Ungar to not have known it was a fake. Case in point, where is it? This spy camera. What is this little item called again? Um, a video camera, your honor. Well, a, a very small one, but... Oh, that's right, a camera. Are oh, you kids and your fancy toys nowadays? Mr. Edgeworth, earlier, you claimed that Mr. Ungard knew of the existence of this note because he was spying on the victim. Is that right? If that were true, then this means Mr. Ungard would have known that the victim had forged the note. Ah! So then, the defendant knew this suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ungard's motive for murder was in has uh The prosecution's theory of what Mr. Ungard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But, but Your Honor, it's not as if Mr. Ungard monitored Mr. Corrida 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ungard didn't know of. Well, right back at you then, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? Ugh! Order! Mr. Edgeworth, it looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. Ugh! As I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured. It came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you're not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? 
If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ungard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honour, the prosecution. I would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness... This witness is a little unusual. Edward stuttering? That's not like him at all. O unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelley de Kellel to commit murder. But that's impossible! Who in the wo No such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty! Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, just who is this witness? It... it is... <clears throat> yes, go on. Who is it? The man himself. Mr. Shelley de Keller. Oh, Mr. de Keller. What? Sh Shelley de Keller? Why did I sound Irish there or Scottish or something? <laughs> Um, you mean the killer? Uh, uh, I mean the, the, the assassin? Yes, your honor. Uh, he's coming here to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm, well, m m Mr. Wright. Yes, is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is alright to do this. Very well then. The prosecution calls its witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there really no other way left for us? Now then, witness. Um, <clears throat> your name and your occupation, please. <laughs> oh, yes, the a radio, of course. He's not going to come here himself. Very good, sir. My name is Shelley de Keller, and I am a professional assassin. Uh, I say, what is going on here? Your Honor, how can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now, and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source... Mr. DeKalal will testify to this court. So this is, must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Uh, oh no, this will not do. I can't allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. DeKalal himself. Witness, please present some sort of proof that you are in fact Shelley DeKalal. Hmm, I understand. Please, oh, wait a second. I'm so hungry. But Maya! Maya! A, a voice! Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelley de Keller. Well, it looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so... Now then, witness. There is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And, and what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Corrida. Is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corrida. <coughs> now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. Oh, this is all just a bad dream. He has thought it's a bad dream. Shelly de Keller. What's he gonna say? Oh boy. Straight from the horse's mouth, quite literally. There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Hmm. Mr. de Kalal seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. 
While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. de Kalel is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. Oh, boy. There is something that I must first state. We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? S sorry. Go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. That's only because you don't know about my situation. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. The trust between you and your client? I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, well, it would be quite troublesome. And that is why you're testifying in this manner. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the Dekelal name so my clients can trust me. But wouldn't, couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? Well, it has never happened before, but if it ever did... I yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long. Rather, they would certainly... Oh, th th that's enough! Uh, please, no more! Oh, very well. It was only a hypothetical, anyway. And that is the reason why I am here today on this witness stand. Well, that seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think this would be very bad for them. Well, it doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Th the role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You! Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now. Excuse me, but do you care to die? Uh, no, 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 no I, I didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. We understand. So please, tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Eagle maniacal! It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. Oh, I don't really care about all this extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and closed, so you're going to have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. Oh, so I had to do... No. Okay, so I have to do all this stuff. Again. Uh, I don't think I need to press this again. Uh, let me, let me press this again. The trust between your client provides fast, efficient, exchange, trust, identity, roles, carry out. There we go. Yeah, I was right. Uh, I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person. I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck. An assassin with a conscience. Who'd have figured? Now then, everyone. Do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. Well, in that case... I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. 
Excellent. And that is the reason... Yeah. There we go. Now then. I do believe it's about time I revealed the name of my client. Don't you agree? What is it? Ugh. Oh, now I can't even bring myself to ask for the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of the client who requested your... Ugh. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida? That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. What? W w witness! Th that's not who you told me it was earlier! What? Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. Oh, what? This, this can't be on the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. DeKillel just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. DeKillel told him a different name. Matt Ungard, perhaps. I knew it. This, this is outrageous! I was deceived! This, your honor, this witness is telling a very serious lie. But, but you were the one who summoned this witness. Oh! Ah! You, you! Shelly the killer! My testimony just now is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt Ungard, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. Huh. Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Y yeah. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility that the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client, Mr. DeKaler's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. D no! With all this evidence, it's obvious to me that this means that Matt Ungard is innocent. I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. Bailey, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? With the way this is going, Ungar will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But Edgeworth is right. The killer is lying. And Ungar, my client, I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win it like this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Y Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelley de Kalel is certainly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. That testimony just now, it was all one big lie. B Miss Andrews, that suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now... You have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie! But, but Mr. DeKalal himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true! Also, there is quite a bit of evidence pointing towards you. The knife and button, donning the nickel samurai costume. But that's... that's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste impacts with a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want both dead. I... No! Mr. Wright! You... You know the truth! Tell them! Tell them the real story! Who the real killer is! Tell them! Please, help me! Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright... 
Yes, Your Honor? I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? We can take the easy way out and practically tarnish our own, like, sense of self-worth or we can pray that gumshoe's evidence will appear at some point i'll take the gamble Ugh. i mean clearly he's lying enix i can't do it mia i'm sorry but i can't accept the not guilty you are a lawyer i know but but matt ungard is a killer a murderer I, I can't let him get away with this. I just can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I'm no better than Ungard himself. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that this, that it's because of Edgeworth I now know the real truth. He could have gotten Ungard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I would be betraying his trust. Wait. His... his trust? I, I never thought of it until now. I, I... I trust him? Yes, you do. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. DeKillel. Uh, am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right? B but... but... Th that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet, Your Honor. To see through witnesses' lies and to find the truth. That is my job. Ugh. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. <sighs> very well. This trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, please re-establish connection with Mr. De Calal. Right away, Your Honor. Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about, usually done? But what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. De Kellel, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. Oh, you legal people and your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? Okay, somehow we managed to stall to high heaven. Somehow. And right now to high heaven, I'm going to get a drink. So I'm going to take a break and see you on the next one. Later.